we got some Falcons to dive into. Take a look at the Falcons wide receiver room. What do you think? I mean, the big debate that Carl and I had the other day, and I love it. And by the way, some of this is tongue in cheek. So I like to poke the bear because it's only June, but I keep describing Ritter as game manager. And the idea is can Pitts and Drake London both be thousand yard receivers when you don't, maybe not going to be throwing the ball as much as people think. I think you might be, though. The way this, like I said, you have a very versatile tight end room. You can do all sorts of things with him. Kyle Pitts, the hybrid that he is. You've got, well, your B. John Robinson can catch the ball in the backfield. Tyler Algier demonstrated he could do that last year as well. You bring in, you bring in, of course, you got the usual suspects, but think about even that little fast white guy, Scotty Miller. Remember his big yes. catch in the uh, conference championship game right. when he was with the Buccaneers against the Packers? That basically broke the Packers back that game. Good point. And he is a dude who gave us 23 receptions last year, gave the Bucks, I should say. I, mean, I think it's probably similar, right? You could argue 20. I think if you want to set the over-under for Scotty Miller catch, I think 25 is probably a good number. Something like that, sure, yeah. But the dude that we got to meet up close and personal at the uh, Falcons open practice that they had at Mercedes-Benz is Mac Hollins. And this dude, he looks like an X-Man. He's, I mean, we're talking big catch radius, big feet, no shoes. But this dude, he's going to wear shoes on Sundays. <laughs> but the guy is a really big physical receiver. And, of course, Rob, you got to be able to run block if you're playing wide receiver for Arthur Smith. Well, you can say Drake London's very physical. Yeah. Kyle Pitts, very physical. And another physical receiver. Then you supplement that with the speed of a Scotty Miller. I mean, that, that looks pretty intriguing to me. That's right. an interesting wide receiver room. Oh, it was funny, by the way. Uh, why am I whispering him on 100,000 on radio station? We had Drake London in studio up at Flower Branch, and Carl's like, that was kind of a bummer having Mariota throwing it to you, wasn't it? <laughs> How did he answer that? No, he deferred. He totally he deflected, right, Chris? Chris, he totally deflected, he, didn't he? Uh, he uh, showed reverence to his former quarterback and then quickly moved on. No, but he, but he was saying, look, you know, I'm a rookie, and he's just trying to, he was trying to help me out. Just Mariota, just, he, just not really good. And there's a ceiling. I said it last year. But now this year... Based on what I saw in four games, I just – and some this comes back to when we, you and I talk about this. I'm not crapping on Ritter. I just don't know what to make of it because I didn't see enough. Did what you see be, enough? How do you – no, I saw enough to maybe be certainly intrigued and maybe encouraged. Right. What's a good year for uh, Desmond Ritter look like? Uh, 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions, maybe rush for 350 yards. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I'll sign up for that right now. 4,000, 4,200 4, yards. Football, yeah. Yeah. I know it's like – the way this offense is now has been put together, it's not going to be – I don't think every week you're going to see them running the ball 65% of the time. It, it's. I think they can deviate. I think there's enough versatility there. Some weeks they may throw the ball more than they run it, but I think most of the weeks they'll run the ball more than they throw it, but they can do both. That's what's so intriguing about how deep this offense appears to be. The offensive line seems to be as good as it's been in several years. Right. And Drake, the benchmark we always use, right, Mike, is Ryan Tannehill's 2019 season. And that's where he only threw 18 games. I'm sorry, 18, 18 times, times a game. A game. Mm -hmm. 70% completion, 3,000 right. yards, 22 touchdowns, six picks. That's a nice season. Hey, all I care about is the win column. We win 10 or 11 games. I don't care how we that's do what I it. Think. Defense is going to be putting pressure on people. Hey, look, we might be in a position where, unlike the last five years on this football team, Falcons defense might turn somebody over. We get the ball on the right side of the 50 for once. There you go. An another way you can take pressure off your quarterback. Too. Period. Yeah. So we got Drake London. He could have had 1,000 yards had Mario not been such a schnook. He had 72 receptions for 886 yards, four touchdowns. Certainly seemed to be more of a rhythm. He did have the two drops, which fans bring up. But uh, the one game in Baltimore – these sleeves. Got to get these sleeves yeah, off me. Oh, got rid of those sleeves. He was fine. So Drake London, he's a very likable kid, by That's the way. That's right. That was to. a week a hard after worker. he had the other yes. job. He's like, uh oh, does he have the yips now? No, right. he just took the sleeves off. Right. He was kind of sheepish. but you know. Got to have some naked arms. Mac Hollins, I would say comparable numbers to what he did in Vegas is fine by us. Mm -hmm. 57 receptions. Chris has got the notes here. 690 yards, four touchdowns. Drake and Kyle are going to be the bell cows on this offense. Kyle is not the traditional tight end. Obviously, he's more of a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And then he's not on the list because we're talking about, you know, wide receivers. But Jonu Smith, we spoke with him when he got signed. He seems to be a guy that is so athletic and he went in the right hands. They didn't know what they were right. doing in New England, yep. that he can be a kind of explosive piece. Then you got the other guys. Um, Cotero Hodge, serviceable right. pro, certainly. Is he going to be in the mix? Frank Darby. Uh, J.J. Arcega, are those guys going to be afterthoughts when you have the likes of Scotty Miller? You know, Arcega, uh, White said, I think it was Arch was talking about him. I think Squid was talking about it. Chris, I mean, I should say Bo Morgan on the uh, morning shift. But that might be a dude that surprises some people. But but everyone kind of looks at it like, okay, Mac Hollins, Drake London. But you got to remember that if I – I think most Falcon fans would say, I'm happy with Drake and Kyle Pitts getting all the throws because we want to see Kyle Pitts. You got to – 
I know coaches don't think that way, but I think as a fan, don't you feel got to validate that pick? I loved your interview with Arthur Smith because I, I know he's he's more personal and has more of a sense of humor than most of the time when he's very corporate and right. a little stiff on there. He actually sounded pretty relaxed and a little irreverent with you guys. That was actually pretty enjoyable to hear. No, it, was, it was funny. We played some of the sound bites for you. Arthur was saying, you know, you hear these breakdowns. Coaches, guys are in the media. It's like, well, you haven't coached in 15 years, okay? There's a completely new way of doing things. But this goes, I know we're talking wide How many teams have you put together? I heard him say that one, too, in the loud mouse on uh, TV. And we talked about wide receiver, and we are here in this segment. But, you know, the the B. John Robinson thing, because every day this week there's been a story about Jonathan Taylor or Saquon Barkley Mm -hmm. and somebody lamenting the fact that, man, what you don't pick running backs where these you do now because their shelf life is shortened. You don't want to get into a crazy contract with them. But I say this, and I'll say it again. Can we just let this guy play for a couple of years? And we'll figure this out. I mean, you, as Carl likes to say, how do you, where are you going to be in five years, right? I have no idea. I exactly. may not even be here on this mortal coil. Who knows, Mike? Though? Don't say that. <laughs> Can I have your record collection? <laughs> no, it's a Rob Tribble in for Carl today. Take a look at the wide receivers. Yeah, the, uh, the idea that uh, Desmond Ritter, and you just touched on it, maybe in this offense it starts to be a little more open than maybe I expect or some other Falcon fans. And then to your point – like what the Patriots were a couple of years ago when Josh McDaniels was there. And I, I always use the, fa- the fantasy football example because you never know what you're going to get. One week they got a 300-yard rusher. The next week they throw it 50 times. Mm-hmm. If that's, but they're playing to their strengths. 11 wins, my friend. That's what I'm, I'm expecting to win division. 11 wins. Tampa Bay is a hot mess. What's New Orleans right now? They, they seem to be a big wild card. Carolina's somewhat interesting. But it's so funny seeing a Bryce Young. Did you see the practice footage? Yeah. When he's under center, you can't even see him. That's how well, small I mean, he's I, yeah, I, When I first saw that, I thought somebody, because, you know, when he, when he did the introductory press conference, I, I wasn't sure if somebody Photoshopped it, but they had this giant marble podium in Carolina, <laughs> and it looked like he could barely get above it. You know, it's like they had one of like It's like, like when Tom Cruise chair. always wears platform shoes in movies when he's uh, with his, one of his hot co-stars. Right. Have you ever seen a movie made here in the city or a TV show, and you'll see the, the, the guy on a, a platform? Yeah. Like they got it like a like, it's like basically it's like a platform shaped like a bunch of phone books. Yeah. Because you got to get the five foot six dude up there. It is kind of he look. He's going to be fine. I I keep saying Drew Brees. If he's like Drew Brees, he'll mm-hmm. be fine. And all indications are from Saban and everything that came out of Alabama is just how sharp this guy is. How he's going to pick things up. Look for our sake. Let's hope he doesn't. Exactly. But this, I think we're going to be seeing this guy for a decade. He's going to be our next nemesis. Well, in this let's just division. hope when we see him, we can put him on his back with uh, with our newly revamped defense. And how is the new coordinators? Uh, philosophy different from Dean P's? Is he running basically the same system? I don't know. I think Ryan Nielsen, based on what they did in, in New Orleans, you were getting the pressure from your down lineman. Mm. You know, but Caden, I think Caden Ellis is going to be flying in there. I think you're going to have a lot. I don't know how much he's going to blitz because P's was kind of reluctant to blitz if he didn't have to. Right. Dan Quinn was the same way. The year we went to the Super Bowl, Dan Quinn just was sublime. He dialed up the blitzes. Remember the Packers game, Seattle? You know, we just knew when to do it. Who was it? It was Poole. Poole, the yeah. kid from Florida, the, the free agent. We'd send those guys in and we just have the perfect timing. I think you're going to get there because the rotation is going to be so more fresh. And we'll talk more about this later in the week. But I'm, I'm excited about the defense because for the first time in, well, since the 17th season, we got dudes going to do it. It just seemed like Terry Fontenot's done everything right now. We don't have, we have nothing to go on based on what's on paper right now. But on paper, it certainly is intriguing. Much better defense on paper. Right. More versatile offense on paper. Better offensive line on paper. So you agree we're doing wide receiver slash tight ends. So. Pitts and Drake London can reach 1,000 yards. Because that's, if that's the case, then we've had a really great year from, oh, yeah. from our quarterback, Desmond Ritter. How does Tyler Algier feel about Bijan Robbins? He's probably saying all the right things. I, I totally. rushed for 1,000 yards. Yeah, and he's gonna uh, hello, to, I'm still here. He's um, going to do his thing. and Think of it more like a very expensive expensive version of Ahmad Bradshaw and Brandon Jacobs years yeah, ago with the, with the Giants. You know, I mean, I know everyone gets enamored with the thunder and lightning thing, but I just think Bijan is going to be so dynamic. You, you can... Set him up for, right now we're talking wide receivers here in the segment, but you can put him anywhere on the field. Same thing goes for John O. Smith and my, for Kyle. My Pitts. approach has always been I, I, I remember uh, going into draft day, oh, please, get, can we just get some oh, you know what? dog of a defensive player? Then we get B. John Robinson. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's ride. And again, Garrett just said in my ear, and don't forget, which we just did, Cordero Patterson, who may be used more as a pass catcher because of the two big right, pieces you've right. already got in the running back. That's another. There's so many. I think this offense, the way it's constituted now with all these people that can handle the ball. That's going to give defensive coordinators nightmares. Right. With this. All the contingencies. And uh, the running backs, we, we know we got some great pieces there. The, now, the offensive line, 
For better, for worse, you got Caleb McGarry at the right price. You get Lindstrom, Dahlman, and this is something we'll talk about later in the week when we look at the offensive line, but Dahlman grades out higher than a lot of centers in this league. Yeah. And then you talk about the new guy, Bergeron from Syracuse, Syracuse. who seems to be an yeah. alpha dog. We were getting stuff from Jake Matthews and from Chris Lindstrom. They didn't want to say that he was going to get the job because you got to earn it, but it sounds like he's very impressed. I think it's uh, shaping up to be the best offensive line we've had in years. I mean, I, 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 I hope so, certainly. For right. sake of Desmond Ritter. But we don't need him seeing ghosts like Matt Ryan did, bless his heart. Oh, man. <laughs> well, poor Matt. I mean, Matt, nobody had a better view of like uh, the uh, the Halo board than Matt. <laughs> shame. Like, I'm, had to, I'm sorry. It's he had to be embalmed shame. after every game. <laughs> no, man. Like, we, we were talking about this the other day, you and me off the air. I think we were, we were driving up to Indy. We're like, man, that high hopes for Matt Ryan up in Indianapolis was an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry about that.